On December 16, 1938, Jimmy Lee Jackson was born in Marion, Alabama, a small town located just outside of Selma. After fighting in the Vietnam War and spending time living in Indiana, he returned to his hometown where he made about $6 a day as a laborer and woodcutter. Jackson became a church deacon, the youngest one at Zion United Methodist Church, and fathered a daughter. Inspired by the civil rights movement, he also tried to vote for the first time in his life. He made several attempts to register as a voter, but he never got past the many hurdles that had been set up to keep African Americans from casting ballots. On the day of February 18, 1965, Jackson, along with 500 people, organized by the SCLC, or the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, were going on a peace walk to the Perry County Jail to sing hymns to inmate James E. Orange, a fellow activist. Among those who helped Jimmy Lee Jackson was a man by the name of C.T. Vivian. Vivian took on major leadership roles in the SCLC and was the leader of this particular peace protest. They then planned to return to the Zion United Methodist Church. Unfortunately, they were met by the police at a post office. Due to the belief that there was going to be a jailbreak, and the police began to open fire on the mass of people. It had come from the direction of Max Cafe, where those fleeing the beating had taken refuge. Jimmy Lee Jackson, a black, had tried to prevent his mother and grandfather from being beaten. Where they were followed by two police officers and were brutally attacked. Jackson was shot by James Bondard Fowler at close range two times in the abdomen. Jackson then fled from the cafe with his mother and grandfather to later pass out down the street at a bus station. And as he ran up the hill, they continued beating him and ran just beyond the church and fell between the church and the post office. He was unarmed and died eight days later in the Good Samaritan Hospital of Selma. Jimmy Lee Jackson was 26, well-liked, quiet, and the youngest deacon of his church. They would bury him the following Saturday, walking four miles in the rain from Marion to the Black Burial Ground, just east of town. Mourning was to come in the following days after Jackson's death. People grieved, cried, and mourned throughout the following weeks. James Bonnard Fallard, the man who shot and killed Jimmy Lee Jackson, was not charged with anything. He was not even fired from his job. This angered many African Americans along the South, and they were going to stand up for a small town boy who could not have dreamt of the impact he was going to have. Jackson's death led James Bevel, SCLC Director of Direct Action, to initiate and organize the first Selma to Montgomery March to present a way for the citizens of Marion and Selma to direct the anger over Jackson's death into a positive outcome. It also was called to publicize the effort to gain voters' registration reform. Held a few days later, on March 7, 1965, the march became known as Bloody Sunday for the violent response of state troopers in the sheriff's posse. 
who attacked and beat the protesters after they walked over the Edmund Pettus Bridge and left the city. After the bloody Sunday impact, President Lyndon B. Johnson announced his federal bill to authorize oversight of local practices and enforcement by the federal government. It was passed by Congress as the Voting Rights Act of 1965. After the act was passed, Jimmy Lee Jackson's grandfather, Kager Lee, who had marched with him in February 1965 in Marion, voted for the first time at the age of 84. In 2007, 42 years after the crime, Fowler was charged with first-degree and second-degree murder for Jackson's death and surrendered to authorities. On November 15, 2010, Fowler pled guilty to manslaughter and apologized publicly for killing Jackson. If it weren't for Jimmy Lee Jackson, James Bevel would have never been inspired to protest. If it were not for Bloody Sunday... The Voting Rights Act of 1965 may have never been passed. It seems as though the death of a small town boy wouldn't seem to have much impact. But Jimmy Lee Jackson was no ordinary small town boy. He was a civil rights activist. Even today, people come to Selma to celebrate the events that happened back in 1965. They come to the grave of Jackson, and they walk the bridge that Jackson had inspired James Bevel to walk. Even today, Jimmy Lee Jackson small-town boy of Marion, Alabama, was one of the major sparks of the civil rights movement.